Hi there, this is Ranjit and I have the LG G4 and in this video we'll be doing the gaming review and this is the dual sim variant that is officially sold in India and let's start uh, gaming with some casual games like Dead Trigger then we'll move on to heavier games and we'll also test the temperatures as you can see uh, right now I'm in AC room there and the ambient temperature is around 26 degrees Celsius we'll uh, test the temperature after gaming so this is Dead Trigger and the thing that I like is the speaker, though it has just a mono speaker, the speaker is uh, actually very loud and clear. Let me actually lower the speaker volume, it's pretty loud. One notch lower. Also the screen quality is really nice. And as you can see, it's handling this uh, without any issues. Very smooth gameplay. And some people were asking me about the touch response. As you can see, the touch response in gaming is very good. But I noticed minor keyboard lag uh, uh, at times. I won't say it's lag, but uh, I would have uh, expected uh, the keyboard to be a little bit more responsive when you type fast. That's what I have noticed. So as you can see, it's running this uh, dead trigger without any issues. Uh, let's now move to some heavier games and let's see how it handles. So let's get out of this one. One thing that I've noticed is that I also tried to run this Mortal Kombat X but uh, the game is crashing always. There is one setting if you go to the settings and if you go to the battery options. Uh, let me just look at that. Yeah. This game optimizer is enabled and what it does is it actually scales the game to 1080p instead of the quad HD. But even when I disable this, I thought that might be causing the issue. Still this Mod uh, Mortal Kombat S X is actually just crashing. So I'm not sure why it's doing that, but let's move to another game. So this is Riptide GP2 and we just uh, move to steer along and bring the boost. And as you can see, it's handling it uh, very well. Again, the sound output uh, is really nice. It's actually very loud and clear. And as you can see, it's running this Riptide GP2 very well. Also, the screen quality is excellent. Uh, the Quad HD Quantum display is really nice. The colors look uh, punchy and the screen is actually pretty bright. I'm not on the maximum brightness. I'm just at 45% brightness. If I would have kept it on uh, high brightness, it would have been very bright. But as you can see, even with around 42% brightness, it's very good. Even in outdoor sunlight, uh, when you keep it on auto setting, the brightness, uh, the screen quality is really nice and it's easily legible in even direct sunlight. So as you can see, it's running this one very well without any issues. Again, it's not a very heavy game, uh, but let's just move out of this one also now. Let me just swipe that away also. Let's just clear everything. And now let's uh, run Asphalt 8. So this is Asphalt 8. Let me actually show you the graphics settings. And as you can see, I'm at the highest graphics setting and I'm using the on-screen steering. So let's play a few levels and see how it behaves. So this is Asphalt 8 and this is the Iceland level and I'm using the on-screen uh, steering. Let me just pause for a second. Let me increase the brightness a little bit. As you can see, I'm just on 43% brightness. Let's keep it at 55 now. And uh, let's resume. Trying the drift very smooth
and uh, I'm not noticing any lagginess whatsoever and regarding the processor used on this uh, it's based on the snapdragon 808 chipset uh, which is a six core chip and the gpu is the arduino 418 so technically speaking it's not as powerful as the snapdragon 810 but as you can see it's handling uh, these games without any issues and definitely i would say it's not heating up that much as compared to the snapdragon 810 chipset Let's continue gaming and we'll check the temperatures also. And it's been just around 7 odd minutes since we were gaming, since we started this gaming sessions. So let's look at the temperatures also. I don't notice any heat as of now, but let's look at the temperatures. As you can see, it's around the 42 degrees Celsius mark here on the screen. And here on the back again, it's around the 43, it's registering, it's slightly warm but not uh, that hot, 43.6 it's registering, but let's continue. Generally, some of these devices after 15 odd minutes of gaming, they start heating up. Uh, but thanks to that leather back, though it was touching around 43 degrees Celsius, it was not feeling that hot. In terms of touch response really nice half and uh, i haven't noticed any frame drops till now very smooth So this is the Tokyo level, we'll play this for a minute or two then move to another heavy game. And we are at the highest graphics uh, setting. Still very responsive, touch response is still excellent. And I can feel now the back is a little bit warm. It's feeling a bit warm, not very hot, but uh, a bit warm. We'll look at the temperatures a bit later, but still in terms of gameplay, it's playing it very well, I would say. So as you can see, it is handling this game without any issues. In fact, it's playing it really well. So it's playing it really well. Uh, do not notice any lagginess. But now uh, the back, uh, particularly where the volume buttons are located, uh, it was getting a little bit on the Hotter side, let's uh, look at the temperatures now, if I don't crash, yes. Uh, and it's been about 12 odd minutes since we were gaming. And now definitely, as you can see, it's touching around the 46 degrees Celsius mark, 45, 46, here on the screen. Let's look at the back. Uh, here again, uh, near, if you touch the camera, it's about 44 degrees Celsius, uh, 44 to 44.5. Yeah, underneath this uh, LED flash it's around 45. Here, uh, as you can see here, I was telling, it's getting a bit toastier. Uh, it's around the 46 Celsius, 46 to 47 degrees Celsius mark. So definitely the back here, uh, it's getting a little bit on the harder side. Uh, so let's get out. But the good thing is that in terms of gameplay, we did not notice any throttling. So it's handling the gameplay fine. Let's also try Nova 3, which is sort of a heavy game, and let's see how it handles. So this is Nova 3. And this is a pretty heavy game, and I've noticed this game to stress many devices. So let's see how it handles this one. Let's see if uh, it's lag free. So 
as you can see it's handling this one without any issues and I'm not no noticing any lagginess so for gaming it's uh, actually performing very well uh, but this level is done so let's quickly look at the temperatures again and as you can see the screen is getting pretty toasty around 48 degrees celsius almost touch 49 here at the top here it is really hot this area around 40 lower 47 to 48 degrees i would say let's look at the back and here again as you can see it's touching about the 50 degrees 51 degrees celsius mark so yes even the snapdragon 808 is exhibiting uh, quite a bit of heating uh, when we stress but with my regular usage when i using uh, was using it normally it was not getting that hot so definitely with extended gaming it can get a bit on the hotter side uh, that we have noticed but the good thing is that it could handle um, any game we threw at it on the most of the heavy games that we threw on it without any issues and without any lagginess all throttling but again it couldn't run this particular game that was model combat so even for gaming it's actually pretty good considering the fact that it has 32 gigs of internal storage and uh, a micro sd card slot but yes with extended gaming and with heavy gaming even the lg g4 can get on the hotter side i'll also be posting the full in-depth review for this device very soon so stay tuned to my channel thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video